Okay, so you've watched my video on what four things you absolutely must have on a blood draw the first time around to determine whether or not you have low testosterone. Along with these four tests, you will also need to have some tests done to de determine whether or not there might be something wrong going on inside your body. That's what I mean by health markers. Markers of health, indicators on a lab panel that tell you whether or not there may be something wrong with you. There are five things I personally would not miss on a lab draw. I missed them the first time around, unfortunately, because I went through a TRT clinic. They didn't know what they were doing. I didn't know what they were doing. It was just a bad situation. Before I get into these five things, I need to bring up something very important, and that is two hormones, luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone, LH and FSH respectively. These hormones are produced in your pituitary in your brain. These hormones travel down to your testicles and stimulate your testicles to produce both sperm and testosterone. If you get your labs back and your LH and FSH are extremely low, this is indicating your low testosterone problem is likely originating in your pituitary, not in your testicles. So this means there may be something that you and your doctor need to investigate further with your brain before you simply start testosterone replacement therapy as a solution. If you have a pituitary tumor, this is something you do not want to miss. If your LH and FSH come back within normal limits, this most likely means your low testosterone issue is a problem that originates in the testicles and not in the brain. If the problem originates in the testicles with your testicles ability to produce testosterone, this is diagnosed as primary hypogonadism. If it is a problem with the brain sending a signal down to your testicles to produce that testosterone, then that is diagnosed as secondary hypogonadism. This is why having LH and FSH, luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone, is extremely important on your initial labs. Please note that after you start testosterone replacement therapy, it is likely that your LH and FSH will be bottomed out on your lab results. The reason for this is because of the negative feedback loop between your testes and your brain. When you introduce exogenous testosterone or testosterone from an outside source that your body does not make, your brain detects that and downregulates FSH and LH. So it's essentially sending a signal to your testicles that your body has enough testosterone, please, oh God, please stop making more testosterone. And so your testes comply, they stop making as much testosterone, and that's it. Your body's, your body's natural production of testosterone essentially shuts down when you're on TRT. So that's why when you're on testosterone replacement therapy, it is, it is normal to have basically zero LH and FSH. This feedback loop between your testicles and your brain is known as the hypothalamus pituitary testes axis or the hypothalamus pituitary gonad axis, either one. Okay, back to the video. This is what I would do if I were going to get my blood done. First is a complete blood count. This, among other things, tells you how many red blood cells you have in your body. Secondly, I would do a comprehensive metabolic panel. The CMP gives you an idea of your liver function, your kidney function, and whether or not you may have insulin resistance or prediabetes or type 2 diabetes. Thirdly, I would have a lipid panel done. This gives you an idea of where your cholesterols are, your HDL, which is generally considered your good cholesterol, and your LDL, which is generally considered your bad cholesterol, along with your triglycerides. Fourth, I would have tested your PSA, or prostate specific antigen. This is a test that gives you an indication of whether or not you may have prostate cancer. Lastly, I would get your vitamin D checked. So those are the five things I would for sure have on my first blood draw and every consecutive blood draw alongside the four lab tests I discussed in my previous video. Your CBC, complete blood count, your metabolic panel, your lipid panel, your PSA or prostate specific antigen, and vitamin D. Let me quickly break that down. Your CBC, like I said, gives you an indication of how many red blood cells you have in your body. An extremely elevated red blood cell count is diagnosed as polycythemia, or many blood cells. Polycythemia may increase your risk of having a stroke, having a heart attack, and having a clot in the lower leg called deep vein thrombosis, which can travel to the lungs and cause a pulmonary embolism. So why would I have this done for sure on every lab draw? The reason is testosterone replacement therapy will increase your red blood cell count. This is especially true as you age. The younger you are, the less of an effect it'll have on your lab results. The older you are, the more of an effect it'll have on your CBC results. 
So if you didn't have your CBC done before testosterone replacement therapy, and now you're on TRT and you have your CBC done, and you look at your CBC and you see that your red blood cell count is elevated. Now you don't know, was it elevated beforehand or was it the testosterone replacement therapy that increased your red blood cell count? If you had an elevated red blood cell count beforehand, maybe just on the edge of normal, and then TRT pushed it into dangerous territory, perhaps you had something else going on, like sleep apnea, which it can increase your red blood cell count. So let's say you had sleep apnea, but you didn't know it. You get your CBC done only after you start testosterone replacement therapy. Your CBC is high. So now your doctor may suggest therapeutic phlebotomies to lower your red blood cell count. This means you would go to a blood bank every two months or so to donate blood to lower your red blood cell count. So now your doctor is treating your high red blood cell count numbers. Meanwhile, you have underlying sleep apnea that was completely missed and was the original cause of your elevated red blood cell count to begin with. This is why it is extremely important to get your CBC done before you get onto testosterone replacement therapy. Your comprehensive metabolic panel. Your comprehensive metabolic panel is going to take a look at liver function, kidney function, and your blood sugar. So this is going to give you a good indicator of whether or not you currently have li liver disease, kidney disease, or diabetes. TRT may or may not have an impact on your liver enzymes and your kidney function. It's good to have it done beforehand so you have something to compare your current kidney and liver health to once you start testosterone replacement therapy. Next, prostate specific antigen. This test, like I said, will give you a good idea of whether or not you currently have prostate cancer as roughly one in three men will eventually develop prostate cancer. Most of the time it's non-fatal. I will leave a card up in the corner for a great video by Dr. Mike Evans, which goes into detail on whether or not the PSA test is something that should be done on a yearly screen, um, if it's helpful in saving lives over the long term and things like that. So it's a super interesting video and goes into the nuances of the PSA test and whether or not it's actually useful long term. No, testosterone does not cause prostate cancer. However, if you have prostate cancer to begin with, testosterone can accelerate that cancer's growth. Next is your lipid panel. Your lipid panel, like I said, shows your HDL, good cholesterol, LDL, bad cholesterol, and your triglycerides. Testosterone replacement therapy almost always has an effect on the HDL, a negative effect. Personally, my HDL is about one point below the reference range, which means my good cholesterol is somewhat low. However, I did not get this tested before I started testosterone replacement therapy. I went through a TRT clinic that didn't know what they were doing and I didn't know what I was doing at the time, so I didn't get it tested. I didn't have comprehensive metabolic panel or lipid panel, among other things on my, on my lab tests. So I don't have the opportunity to look at my HDL before and after and see, did testosterone lower my HDL or was it always like that? I can only assume it has lowered HDL since it seems to be the case in almost everyone who starts TRT and that's why my HDL is out of range. But I cannot know for sure and right now I'm making assumptions. So don't make the same mistake I did. Get your lipid panel done before you get onto TRT so you have a baseline to compare it to. Lastly, I would include in my blood work a vitamin D test. In studies, low vitamin D is linked to depression, mood swings, anxiety, and a list of other things. So I think it's a good idea to have it tested just in case your symptoms are caused by low vitamin D and not actually low testosterone because your testosterone was like mid-normal and a TRT clinic said, here, here's your injection once every week and you don't feel any better on TRT and lo and behold, it was your vitamin D level that was holding you back but uh, you never got it tested and now you're stuck on TRT for life. So vitamin D, I personally include it on my lab test and I recommend to my friends that they should do the same. Your primary care doctor will offer to do a lab panel every single year at your physical. On this lab panel should include the five things that I've just mentioned alongside many other things that test your thyroid function and your adrenal gland function. Your doctor knows much more than I do about these lab tests and how to read them. What he orders for your yearly labs is perfectly sufficient and combine that with a test for luteinizing hormone, follicle stimulating hormone, and the four things I discussed in my last video, total testosterone, free testosterone, SHBG, and ultra-sensitive estradiol. Bam, there you go. That's everything you need. That full yearly lab panel your doctor orders for you, plus 
Glutenizing hormone, follicle stimulating hormone, free testosterone, total testosterone, ultra sensitive estradiol, and SHBG, like I discussed in my previous video. That'll be perfectly sufficient to have done before you get onto TRT and every consecutive blood draw thereafter. So, if you're going to your primary care doctor to get TRT, he's already going to have most of the work done for you. You just need to make sure that on his lab orders, he's not missing FSH or LH or free testosterone or the ultra sensitive estradiol test because he doesn't specialize in testosteronology. He specializes in taking care of your health in general. So he may not know these and you may need to remind his clinic to send those along with your lab orders. On the flip side, TRT clinics are not great at either thing in general. They'll order less than minimal necessary to determine whether or not you have low T and what the cause is. And they'll order less than optimal labs for your health markers. So with the TRT clinic, you gotta be on the ball looking for anything missing on your labs that you need to have done ahead of time before you get onto TRT and every consecutive lab draw thereafter. So if there's something missing on your labs when your doctor from a TRT clinic or otherwise sends it into a hospital or a private lab, you need to call that clinic and tell them, hey, I want these things on my labs because I, I wanna make sure I'm staying healthy and not missing anything. And if they don't oblige, find a new doctor. Always listen to your doctor. I am not a doctor. I'm just giving you the information that I wish I knew from the get-go. Because like I said, my labs only contain total testosterone and estradiol along with prolactin and vitamin D. So kind of pathetic for uh, a first lab. And then every consecutive lab after that was just total testosterone and estradiol. I didn't even check my health markers. So that sucks. I don't have anything I can compare my current labs to. And I don't want you to make that same mistake. So. Please leave any comments down below or questions. I'm happy to have a conversation about this or answer any questions. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll check you guys in the next one.